Good morning, ACF. Do I have something on my face? I dress this way because I want you to see Shane. See, we put uniforms on every day and people think we're invincible. They think we got our stuff together. They think we can handle anything. This happens to you. Your colleagues might look at you this way. Some of your family, some of your friends might even look at you this way. But I've got a word for you. You look like me. Shove your neighbor and say you're muddy. Go ahead, give him a shove, say you're muddy. You are muddy. Listen, I think most of you would agree with me that there is always something or someone trying to steal our joy. It could be your spouse. Don't say amen. It could be your children. It could be that person you pray for all the time. You know the one. God, please don't let them be here today. I just can't deal with that. The struggle is real. If it weren't, we wouldn't be in crisis. And we wouldn't struggle. And God wouldn't have gave me this sermon. Because life is muddy and life is messy. So I believe in the middle of our mess that God's word has got some meaning for the mess you may be involved in. So turn with me this morning, if you would, to the book of James. We're going to go right to the first chapter. We're going to start with that second verse. James says this in that first chapter in the second verse. He says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. What a way to start out the book. Verse 3 says, Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. It produces steadfastness. It produces victory. It produces you the ability to be an overcomer and to deal with things in life that maybe you thought you couldn't. But it produces perseverance. And he says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Lord, as we dig into your word today, I'm praying, God, that our hearts would just be open. Lord, and that we would realize that in the middle of our mess, in the middle of this mud, God, that we can persevere. God, that you have given us the strength so that we can be complete in you and that we will not be lacking in anything. Can you say amen? amen. You see, I got this message just from living life. Life will preach to you if you listen. It'll preach even louder if you don't. I've got this weird problem. When I see things of mine that are messy and dirty, I start relating it to my life. And then I start seeing my life as a mess. And I think other people are looking at me as a mess. And I say, God, how can I be a good husband? How can I be a good dad? How can I be a leader when I can't even keep clean? So as I looked at this mud all over myself, I heard God say to me, what's the meaning of the mud? Does the mud mean that I'm unclean? Does it mean that my life is a mess? Or does it mean that I've been helping out some other muddy people and I got a little bit on me? Does the mud mean every time I touch something, I make a mess and I'm no good at anything? Or does it mean I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty? You see, the mud doesn't mean what you think it means. We misinterpret the mud so often in our lives because we miss the meaning of the mud. But I want you to know personally, I've seen some of the meaning of the mud in my life. And when you get to see the meaning that God wants to show you in the midst of your mess, in the midst of the mud, you can learn to love the mud. You can learn to embrace the mud because it doesn't mean what you think it means. See, we get so focused on what's right in front of us that we miss the meaning of the mud. There's a couple letters from a proverb that I've read that always come to my mind when I'm thinking about mess and I'm in the middle of situations in my life. And these letters are NM, NM. NM, NM. These are two letters that stick out to me in muddy situations. And I got them from this proverb. Proverbs 14 says, Where there are no oxen, the manger 
is empty. That's deep. But it says, from the strength of an ox comes abundant harvest. That says to me, NM, NM. That says to me, no mess, no mud, no motivation. No mess, no mud, there's no movement. No mess, no mud, there's no ministry. And there's no life. You see, we want the strength of the ox, but we don't want to shovel the stuff they produce. I need to say that again. We want the strength of the ox. We want life and life more abundantly. We want to be great like God's called us to be, but we don't want to deal with the stuff that comes with it. Listen, life is muddy. It's messy. But there's meaning in the mud. We've got to learn to interpret the mud. So many times we get in the middle of our mud. We get in the middle of our mess. And we just want to get rid of it. God, please take this away. God, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Let's get rid of the mess that I'm in. There was a minister that every time he drove home from service, he had a long driveway that led to his house. And when he got down his driveway, he got to a certain spot and there was always this space in his yard. And the grass just would not grow there. It was a dead spot in his yard. The rest of his yard was immaculate, the perfect green grass. But he had this one spot that just would not grow grass. He would do everything he could to get rid of that dead spot in the middle of his yard. He would plant grass seed every spring. He would water it. He even put a fence around it. You know what the problem was? It was his children. Every time they went out to play, they'd go right to that dead spot and they'd mess it up. They would trample the seed. The grass had no chance to grow. This minister got so upset and angry with his kids. He was always yelling at them, play anywhere. Just stay away from the dead spot so my grass will grow and we'll have a full yard. He said one day he was driving down his driveway after a service and he said God spoke to him. He seen that dead spot, and God said, you need to embrace that dead spot. He said, you need to love the mud. He said, one day, you're going to have the greenest grass in your whole yard in that spot. But he said, you're going to be in tears because your kids are going to be grown, and they're going to be gone, and you're going to be wishing that they came back and tore up your yard. You're going to be wishing that dead spot was back in your yard. See, you misinterpret the meaning of the mud. We get into the messy situations, and we just want to get rid of them. God, take this away, but we need to realize that some of the messiest times in our life are some of the most meaningful times in our life. You know where some of the greatest worship services take place? In a hospital room, not in a sanctuary. Because right in the middle of your mess, right in the middle of that situation that seems impossible, God shows up. And when he shows up, he does what no one else can do. And he starts showing you some meaning in the middle of the mess of your life. Yes, you can say amen. Life is muddy. It's messy. You know, when you get home today, you might see some of the same stuff. You might be right in the middle of some of the same situations. But we got to realize we don't need to beat ourselves up over this. Because life is muddy. And it's messy. The psalmist wrote in the 103rd Psalm. He was at a time where he was feeling kind of overwhelmed. And he said, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, and he remembers that we are dust. We are dust. We're human. We're messy. There was an old Lutheran pastor, and he got up to pray over his church one Sunday morning, and I grew up in church. We used to call this the King James Prayer, you know, the big eloquent prayers that had all these fancy words and And this old timer stood up and he said, Father God, it went something like this. Great and mighty king, the everlasting, the the great I am, the beginning, the end, the alpha, the omega. He said, God, we come to you this day humbled because we remember we are but dust. 
And there was a little four-year-old in the sanctuary, and she tugged on her mother's arm, and she said, Mom, what's butt dust? <laughs> See, we misinterpret the meaning. Yes, look at your neighbor and tell him, you're butt dust. You wonder why life is messy? You're butt dust. I don't care. I know I'm butt dust. You wonder why life stinks sometimes because you're butt dust. We got to remember where we came from. We didn't come from nothing. We came from dust. God created us and he knows what we can handle. The Bible says he's not going to give us more than we can handle. And I know that life gets messy. It gets muddy. But there's things we got to remember. He's still in control. I want to introduce you to somebody this morning. Yes, my awesome wife is in the back. And this is one of our grandchildren. This is Benson. He's a happy little guy, full energy. He's five years old now. But Benson's life is it's pretty messy. It's muddy. You see, when Benson was one, he was diagnosed with a rare disease that we we're told is incurable. Benson, uh, this disease is called cystinosis. It affects his kidneys. He can't get nutrients from foods, so this little guy eats from a feeding tube. It got real messy real quick. And I can tell you that our family was discouraged. Fear set in a little bit. There was times that we felt hopeless. The doctors told us that sometime in his little life, He's probably going to need a full kidney transplant just to survive. It got muddy quick. I can tell you that in the midst of it, we started seeing some of the meaning in the mud. You see, we started embracing the mud. We started loving the mud that came into our life. And when we started doing it, God started showing us the meaning of the mud in our life. We started seeing motivation in the mud. When we started seeing motivation, we started moving. And when we started moving, things started ministering. God started to move in our lives. He started doing things in our family that we haven't seen before. Also, I know that God gives us meaning in the mud, and you don't know it, but this is a three-part sermon and I don't know what I'm going to do the other two but after you get to know the meaning when you get to know the meaning of the mud God's going to show you the mercy in the mud because he's going to give it to you and once you get the mercy in the mud God's going to show you the miracle in the mud and I'm believing that when we get to the miracle in this muddy situation he's not going to need that kidney transplant because God's going to give him the miracle he's going to be healed and God will get the glory for it I know that in the midst of our mud I know that in the midst of our situation that there is meaning there is mercy and God's going to give him the miracle can you say amen Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but I know that life is muddy, and I know life is messy. And I know God gave me this message for me, but I believe someone else needed to hear this besides me. The mud doesn't mean what you think it means. We've got to learn how to interpret the mud. We've got to learn to embrace the dead spot. We've got to learn to love the mud because God's going to give you the meaning of the mud in your life. And then he's going to show you mercy. And then he's going to, you will find your miracle in the mud. Worship team, if you'd come up. I feel like God's moving in a little different direction this morning. See, I do some of our uh, specialized stuff where I work, and uh, I got woken up at 2 o'clock this morning, and I don't, I usually I get called in and I go. But this morning when I got woken up, I just felt God saying, you're needed somewhere else. It was hard, but I didn't go in. I told him I couldn't make it, and I wrestled getting back to sleep. And then at 3 o'clock, my phone rings again for another part of the special ops, and they're like, the Sarge says we, we could use you. I said, God needs me somewhere else. I'm not going to be there today. I think it was because God needed me here. He had a word that somebody needed this morning. That there's meaning in the mud in your life. 
So this morning, I want to do something a little different. As I was in prayer, God began to speak to me. And if we all would, if we could stand to our feet, I want to do something that uh, I, I haven't felt led to do in a long time. And, and I want you to know that if, if you need to stay where you are, it's totally fine. But if you would, I would like to invite everybody to come down front. I would like to invite you all just to come to the altars. Anybody that would, if you're not, if you feel like you can stay there, you can stay in your seat. But if you would just come, I want everybody just to come in as we close the service this morning. Listen, there's meaning in the mud. There's meaning in the mess of your life. There's mercy. And I believe you're going to find your miracle in the middle of whatever that situation is, whatever the mess is. So as I closed this morning, I was told of an article. And this article talked about the redwood trees. These redwood trees are some of the the tallest and strongest trees in the forest. And the person writing the article said it, it was strange because as big and strong and tall as these trees were, their root systems were only about three foot deep. The weird part is is that most trees, their root systems are just as tall as the tree is deep so that when a storm comes, that tree can stand and withhold during that storm. So how do these giant, strong, wet redwood trees, how do they make it through storms when their root system is so small? This article went on to say the, the reason that these trees could stand because their root systems we're all connected. You see, God didn't call us to fight storms by ourselves. God didn't call us to do this alone. We're not going to walk through the mud by ourselves. We need to be connected to the Almighty because when we're intertwined with Him, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And not only are we connected with Him, but we're connected with each other. You see, when the storm comes... It's not just fighting one tree. It's fighting the whole forest because there's power in unity. There's power in unity. If you're comfortable and you don't mind doing this, I'd like everybody just to connect arms with the person next to you. Go ahead, connect arms with the person next to you. You see, the rest of this article went on. The rest of this article went on, and what they found, this person making this study, what they found was there was trees that were still in the forest that have been dead for hundreds of years, they said, and they were still standing strong. Do you know why? Because that tells me if you've got that mustard seed of faith if you've got just that little bit of hope left in you, that there's people standing to the right and to the left of you. And when you feel like you can't take one more step, you feel like the mud's just getting too much, you feel like the mess in the situation you're in, you just can't go any farther. There's somebody on your right and there's somebody on your left and they're going to help hold you up because all we need is a little bit of faith. And God will start revealing the meaning of the mud in your life and He will show you that you're not alone when you're facing these trials. You're not alone in your situation. And guess what? When you start getting your strength back, that person to your right or your left, they might start feeling a little weak. So now you've got the opportunity to return the favor and you can hold them up because we were not intended to fight alone. God's called us to be there for one another. But when you're connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator of all things, guess what? You can do it. You've got what it takes to get to where God needs you to be. You've got to find the meaning of the mud and the mess in your life. And when you find that meaning, God's going to show you mercy like you never thought was possible. And through that mercy, you're going to find your miracle. If you'd bow your head with me today. Lord, I'm so thankful. Thankful for your word, God. I'm thankful for your word, God. Lord, that your word that pierces our hearts. Lord, that you give us meaning in life. Lord, I'm thankful for your love and your Holy Spirit. God, and I pray today 
for those that are going through messy situations, for those that just seem like they can't take another step. God, I don't know what it is, but you do. And Lord, I pray right now that you would just intervene. Do what you do, God. Lord, I pray that you'd show up in the middle of their mess. God, show up in the middle of that situation. Lord, let them see the meaning of the mud and the muck in their life. God, and when they see it, let your mercy just start flooding their soul. God, give them the peace that passes all understanding. God, and let them find their miracle in the midst of their mess. I don't know who you are today. I don't know what your situation is. But God's called you here for a reason. I believe that 100%. And today, I just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not in this battle alone. You can look to your right and left, and there's a lot of people here that are willing to stand next to you, and they're willing to be there no matter what you're facing and what you're going through. This morning, I just feel God saying, if there's someone here that needs prayer, they're going through a situation, you just feel hopeless or helpless, and you want to come, we want to agree with you together in prayer. You can come right up to this front area, and we will agree with you in prayer. All of us will. Hallelujah. I don't know what that situation is. I don't know who you are. Yes, come right forward. Hallelujah. They'll let you through. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. As we take time to pray, hallelujah, if you need prayer, you come. We'll stay here as long as we need to. But I, I know that some people got things that you got to do. Life is busy. It's messy. So if not, I want to say God bless you. And I want you to know that you're a bunch of muddy people. You look just like I do. But embrace the mud. Love the mud. Find your meaning in the mud. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.